In the next 12 or 13 minutes or so, I'm going to try to present Einstein's, this medical school's, uh, involvement in Kisoro, Uganda. It's a different sort of relationship than most in global health, and I'm going to emphasize these differences uh, in illustrating the dynamics of a mutually beneficial collaboration that I think really serves the Kisoro population. It's a very unconventional involvement in at least five ways. First, it's a three-way collaboration between a rural district, a U.S. NGO, and Einstein. It's not with an African medical school. We work in the belly of the beast of the workforce crisis. There just are no doctors around. We emphasize service and education as the top priorities. Research follows and is grounded in student involvement. We look at medical students as real contributors, perhaps more than students young adults with uh, a ton of verve, commitment, excitement, enthusiasm, and intelligence who could really help us move the agenda forward. And we strive for sustainability through social and educational enterprises. We try to base everything on hard money, and I'll talk more about that. Brief history of our involvement. In 1989, President Museveni uh, established the Embraer University of Science and Technology called MUST, which really had a different slant, a slant towards community medicine, community health at that time. In the late 90s, Doctors for Global Health, an NGO that I was on the board of, uh, sort of discovered MUST. And I uh, was also a program director at the time at Montefiore in social medicine and primary care. And when I visited uh, Must and asked them how we could help, they, they looked on this ward awash with white coats and students without any supervisors, very few faculty, and said, send us residents, send us postgraduates, send us people who could work with our students uh, at the bedside. And so we did that, and we established our first relationship. Uh, we, we started to send our residents to a very uh, enriching for them experience in tropical medicine, working with uh, Embraer students. But by 2004, we had to ask ourselves, were we really contributing now? The British moved in in a wonderful way, establishing a residency program there at Must, and we were kind of ancillary, and we were not feeling as uh, needed as we were in a country that had one doc for 25,000 people. So I visited three understaffed rural health facilities that were affiliated with Must as potential sites for service and education, and Kisoro was selected on the basis of their enthusiasm for our involvement. This is Kisoro. It's a beautiful, beautiful area of Africa. It's hills, volcanoes, lakes. This is in the map. It's the red area at the very bottom corner, five kilometers from the Congo, five kilometers from Rwanda, very remote, very poor, densely populated. Population makes about a dollar or two a day, subsistence farming. Nobody has electricity. Very few have safe water. The literacy rate is low, and the, there is one doctor for 40,000 people in this area, and that's because they're paid butkus to work there. So the Kisoro program brings together a volunteer NGO committed to community medicine, i.e. DGH, a medical school committed to education through service, Einstein, and a district hospital that was very remote and without resources committed to having doctors in their hospitals and primary care in the villages. That's Kisoro Hospital. So in 2008, after we'd been there a few years, DGH and Kisoro set up uh, a memorandum of understanding, an MOU, in which DGH raises the startup funds, provides volunteer staff and supplies, supports community projects, and tops off the salaries of the Kisoro staff without displacing them. We didn't bring our own, bring our own uh, group in there. We basically topped off the people who were working there to also work in these other endeavors. Kisoro and, DG, uh, Kisoro and KDH, or Kisoro District Hospital, provides the housing. They agree that outside staff come through DGH and provides a local staff for administration, etc. And Einstein Montefiore came in sort of as the preferred provider of the operation there, uh, of skill supervision and funds for students and student-related projects. And so that's how we sort of set up the MOU. 
The number one criterion of the MOU was that all projects using DGH Einstein funds must benefit all three parties directly. For example, all DGH funded KDH sponsored community projects welcome Einstein students and all students get involved only in projects that serve the Casoro community. Not in sort of independent research interests, but in actual projects that serve the Casoro community. Uh, I'm going to elaborate for a, a minute on our, uh, our partnership with Casoro District Hospital, talk about the partners there, and then talk a little bit about the benefits uh, and the the benefits we get and the contributions we give uh, at Monty and Einstein to Casoro. Our major partner uh, in Casoro is the Casoro District Hospital. It's got a 150-bed hospital. It's four specialties of medicine, peds, surgery, and OBGYN. Gets about 120 to 150 OPD visits a day and an active HIV clinic. All of this is staffed by one or two young Ugandan docs who supervise eight clinical officers, all four departments uh, with one or two doctors. Uh, nursing has 60% of its positions filled, lab is basic, uh, x-ray and ultrasound uh, are there sometimes when there's electricity. This is Kasora District Hospital, for those of you who know or have seen uh, district hospitals in, in Africa, it's, uh, it's quite similar, it's overcrowded, uh, big wards, uh, patients uh, around the beds, um, and that's me and one of our medical students at the time making rounds in the hospital. Uh, so the first way we were able to contribute was in the clinical realm, uh, both inpatient and ambulatory. And this really opened up the doors to our involvement in the community that later followed. Uh, so we send now about uh, 16 to 20 PGY3s in medicine who go work at Kisoro throughout the year. We make a commitment of our program to this hospital. So the residents don't go anywhere, they go to this one place and it's a partnership with this one hospital and this one district that we try to build. Uh, all take the Einstein Global Health course, which is about a 120 hour prerequisite that takes course uh, a month of the last month in their PGY2 years. Any PGY3 who wants to go takes a, uh, a diploma certified uh, by New York State course in global health. Um, for about 100 hours, and it is based on Uganda and based on Africa and uh, based on what their experience is likely to be, and it combines both students and residents. Um, while there, they work on the wards uh, in medicine, male and female ward or both. They cover 11 months a year in an experience that's uniquely dependent on clinical skills because there are no resources in the hospital. And we've established the first chronic disease clinic in southwest Uganda, Uganda as well to take care of diabetes, hypertension, CHF, et cetera, staffed by the Monte residents uh, and with the young Kasoro physicians who were actually teaching a bit about uh, chronic disease. It's one of our residents, uh, one of the nurses on the female ward. What's the funding for the residents like in this? The residents pay for the flight? No problem. I've been do sending residents abroad for over 30 years in different capacities, in different places, and paying for a flight has never been an impediment to their involvement. Montefiore supports the resident salaries during this period of time. DGA supports the administration in the form of top-offs for the local staff, for example, a DGH program manager that helps pull it all together, and KDH, Kasura District Hospital, supports uh, subsidizes the housing and provides administration and personnel. So everybody joins together and to, pr uh, to uh, make this thing happen. Of course, the question is then, who supervises the residents? And of course, my answer would be the GHACS faculty, of course. Yo! So what is the GHACS faculty? Uh, the Global Health and Clinical Skills Faculty Development Fellowship was started by Montefiore uh, recently. Uh, it's four faculty fellows and a faculty development. It's three months a year that each fellow spends in Kasoro. Thus, we cover all 12 months with faculty presence on the wards. They teach clinical diagnosis and reasoning in Uganda, and then they bring it back home to the Bronx in eight months of house staff uh, teaching here with our residents. Uh, they get involved in two educational service projects. I'm sorry two 
research projects, one in medical education here in New York, and the other uh, community service in Kosoro. It's a 12-session work week, so each fellow will work two evenings in the clinic here, and that leaves open seven free sessions for research and teaching and education, and five clinical ones, which are both seeing patients in primary care and precepting. The funding is therefore totally based on the five clinical sessions. All of it's on hard money. It make about $80,000 a year for this. It's a win-win-win, we think, for everybody concerned. The faculty fellows get mentored experience at Einstein and in Kisoro in what they want to go into, which is usually medical education and with an emphasis on clinical skills and global health. So we try to combine these two areas of interest. Montefiore gains low-cost, enthusiastic medical educators in clinical skills and reasoning and meets the ACGME requirements for supervision abroad. So somebody's always in the hospital working. And Kisoro gains dedicated, experienced clinical supervisors uh, for their patients. So everybody benefits from this, uh, this. So I've touched on a little bit about our residents and our attendings and how they both contribute and benefit to the scene, but I think the real core of our contribution to the Kosoro population is through the work that our students do in the villages. The Einstein Global Health Fellowships were brought to us by Dr. Al Cooperman about 40 years ago or more. Al was a real pioneer in, uh, in global medical education and uh, started the Global Health Fellowships uh, long ago. Uh, in that period of time, we've uh, sort of learned that the uh, four keys to successful student projects, at least for us, are that students get to really contribute in some way, actively, in ways that really reflect the many roles of a doc in global health, that they have a diverse and intimate experience with the local people and culture, that it's rigorous throughout, but very enjoyable, and it's supervised tightly, mentored both in New York and in Kosoro. So the Uganda Global Health Experience is in two parts. We send four to six senior students per rotation, two times a year, one in the fall and one in the spring, for a minimum of two months. During the two months, half of it, about half of it is clinical in a tropical medicine sub-internship with on-site supervision by me as the attending. And then the second half, or five weeks, is spent doing a community medicine project in the villages, usually in medical education. The students in New York during the June health course, which is that 100-hour prerequisite that they and the residents have to take, prepare four health talks to be delivered with the village health workers in collaboration with the village health workers and teaching the village health workers and doing it together. Uh, and. Um, then they do clinical research, they design a survey in an area of interest, of priority interest to the village that they're working in, and, uh, and carry out it, the survey that they design while they're making home visits to all the different homes in the village during the course of a month that is sort of advertised as them being um, educators, medical educators and public health workers, not necessarily clinicians, which they're not in that role then. The overall experience reflects the role of a global health physician, which is both a clinician and team leader in community education and public health. And here's, I'm just gonna fly through a couple of quick shots here. This is some of our students tech carrying a patient into the wards. This is rounds uh, happening around the bedside uh, in the afternoon. We make two and a half hour teaching rounds every day on both wards and also rounds in the morning. This is a student uh, giving a talk in the community, another one giving a talk in the church, carrying out surveys in the home, and carrying out surveys again in the home. Uh, what is the funding like? Well, it incorporates a Kosoro tuition. So the Einstein Global Health Fellowships cover 75% of the cost for two months, flight, transport, housing, living, vehicle, driver, fuel the whole nine for getting into the villages, translators full-time, uh, supports about $3,500 per student. 
and part of that is a modest tuition for Kosoro. Uh, what does that go to? What does that tuition go to? Well, it goes to train health practitioners. Our students in this case, though, are not fellows or medical students or other faculty of medical schools. They're village health workers in the community. You know, in places in Africa, most places don't have docs around. They exist in the medical schools in the capitals. In the rural areas, there are none. And what the rural areas depend on for health care are village health workers who are respected community members trained in health. So we get involved in the training of the village health workers. The VHW program is supported by both DGH and by Einstein, with DGH supporting the VHW stipends and Einstein supporting their training as an academic institution might do, but at a very different level than usual. The win-win is very obvious. The VHWs are key to improved access to health care for the villagers and really the soul of the health care going on in those villages. Uh, and for us, there are uh, ambassadors for our Einstein Community Medicine Month. There are colleagues, there are guides in the villages, they're the people that open the door for our students in their own villages, and, and it's a wonderful collaboration. The VHW roles, we have VHWs that we support in 45 villages in the area. Uh, they have a whole bunch of different uh, roles, uh, health education and prevention, they make home visits, uh, gather data, identification and management of malnutrition in people with chronic disease, uh, access to Kasura District Hospital when needed, actively giving community-based therapy in the field. And they are really the soul of our, the 12 projects that we have orchestrated that this triumvirate of DGH, Kasura District Hospital, and Einstein, this tripartite collaboration, sponsors about 12 different uh, projects in the communities around Kasoro Hospital. Um, malnutrition programs that feed about 150 kids at a time. Uh, about seven or eight hundred kids are rehabilitated each year. Cervical cancer screening and a women's clinic we established. Uh, we um, is the first rural Ugandan um, uh, cervical cancer screening program uh, that was mentioned actually in the parliament of uh, Uganda, maternal mortality and antenatal care projects, psychiatry in the community through our psychiatry department in Montefiore, chronic disease in the community as well where we actually diagnose, monitor through our VHWs people with chronic disease in the community and we have about four or five hundred patients who never have to make their way to the hospital to get medicines, but the we deliver the medicines to them through the VHWs who, who are trained in monitoring them. Uh, domestic violence, safe house couples, adult literacy, women's focus groups, microfinance initiatives. All of these projects our students get involved in while there, if they, if they choose. This is a group of the village health workers with some of our students uh, in the picture as well. This is a, one of our monthly meetings. And then the last question is, is it sustainable? And we're trying to make it sustainable. Uh, we're, our goal is freedom, more than 80% free of external grant or donor funding. We want to base all the revenue that we get on earned for both health services and education. So the education model I've already talked about. It's a tuition model in which Kasoro receives support for the projects that the students actually get involved in. That pays for the administration, the mentorship, field supervision with Einstein and other schools. And then we have this thing that we've been working on for a year and a half uh, called the Transport Plus Insurance Program where we're actually asking the villagers to contribute as sort of a community medicine insurance program, which we're getting off the ground now quite, quite nicely, uh, which is really a social enterprise. And we're going to be actually orchestrating um, a, you know, a, a little business and uh, ambulance that will actually, the spinoffs on the profit will actually pay for the community programs that we're operating. So our goal is freedom from grant or donor funding, and we're going to be basing that on both education and health services uh, enterprises. Uh, so I hope I covered these five points and how we're 
unconventional. The Kasaurians feel like we uh, we give a lot uh, to them, and we have a, a, a wonderful relationship because of that. And both inpatient, outpatient workforce, the VHW program, community education, women's health initiatives, etc., malnutrition program, chronic disease programs, etc. But we feel we get a ton as well. We get a ton in terms of a, both the tropical medicine experience clinical reasoning and clinical skills, which is really in short shrift in a lot of our internal medicine programs. We're really trying to develop a cadre of educators through this fellowship that are going to actually be able to deliver that, not only in Kasoro, but there where it's needed, really practice it and get it down and then take it back home. Uh, a research experience using data to inform clinical and public service, an intimate, intimate experience of culture, and uh, really the, the warmth of uh, the Ugandan people, like that, and uh, like that. Now, I took this uh, just before I left, and you know what the message was here? What was the message? The message here was, you go home and you vote for Obama. <laughs> okay, thank you.